This section is entitled Change of Variables Polar Coordinates. Now in the Larson book, uh, and of course we're using other books, you can find this too. The, uh, it's section 10.4, I believe I have some old calculus notes posted in D2O. Uh, if you need to review what polar coordinates are. Uh, so I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that, but the, uh, the basics of this, you know, as a point, instead of defining as an XY location, it's defined in R, distance from the origin, or pole, to the value, and then theta, which represents the angle from the x-axis. So here are a couple of important conversions, that x squared plus y squared equals R squared, and x equals R cos theta, y equals R sine theta. And which if I, uh, in my notes where I do polar coordinates, if I drew a vertical line coming from this point down here and wrote a triangle, you could easily see why these are true because cosine would equal x over r, sine would equal y over r, so it'd be easy to solve. Now, you know, polar coordinates, why do we care? Well, we're going to see that we oftentimes will have integrals that are easier to solve or actually must be converted to polar coordinates to be able to be integrated so it's oftentimes it's a necessity so one thing to keep in mind as you you know go to this section and throughout the rest of the chapter is I mean sometimes yes it might the a problem may say okay evaluate this in polar coordinates but you'll see that it if you think that polar coordinates needs to be the, the, the method to use then go ahead and use it you don't need to be given you know expressed written consent to be able to use polar coordinates uh, if you think it applies, and it, it'll apply, and, and um, one uh, one common time when it's going to apply is uh, it, it most likely is if your region of integration is uh, circular. If it's a circle, polar coordinates work very well. Um, now, the change of variables to uh, polar coordinate form. Now I'm not going to be going to the trouble of reversing uh, limits of integration on these. We're going to stick with this order. So whether you started out dy dx or dx dy, it, it, it's going to convert to this form dr d theta with this r. Now I believe books will explain without going into the geometric details, but yes, there's a reason that it's r and you can, if you're curious, you can look that up, but it's not something you'll have to define in my class or explain why is that R there, it's just there. So it automatically has this R down there every time. So it's R dr d theta plus whatever variables of R and theta you have to integrate. So that R right there would automatically be there. Um, so if you were just finding area, you know, where you don't have this function here, you know, dA could be dy or dx, to find the area it would have that R there, R dr d theta. Now you're going from your uh, lower angle to your upper angle, then you're going, uh, uh, well, in function of theta. I shouldn't say that R, the radius, could be a function of theta. Let me correct myself. You're going from the inner radius to the outer radius, which if they're perfect circles, these will be numerical. So that's, you know, as I told you in the last section, that if you, if the coordinates are, re if they're a rectangle, in rectangular coordinates, that's, you'll have numbers. Um, as the inside limits also in addition to the outside limits. Well here if your region of integration is a circle uh, you're going to see that the uh, R is going, regions of integration for R is going to be uh, numerical. Now of course you know R could be defined as you know R equals 2 sine of theta or something like that then it would not be numerical. And alpha and beta are the difference in the, for theta, or the angle differences, where that difference must stay between 0 and 2 pi numerically for this to work. For example, you know, you have the whole idea and trig of coterminal angles, and let me use pi, pi as an example. You know, pi and 3 pi are, are the same location, they're coterminal angles, but, but that doesn't mean you could take one of these polar integrals and just, well, I could either go from 0 to pi or 0 to 3 pi. That is not correct. You would have to go 0 to pi because, like I said, the numerical difference between 0 and 3 pi is more than the range of that 2 pi right there. So you can't just use any coterminal angle. 
the difference the difference between these upper and lower limits has to be less than 2 pi and greater than or equal to 0 it can't be negative either all right so that's uh, let's take a look right here now if we looked at this region for x squared plus y squared equals 9 and you want to find the area of a circle which you know obviously you're not going to use calculus to find the area of a circle but obviously setting up integrals are important because we might be integrating other functions across circular regions so finding volumes and that sort of thing well uh, dy dx if you're trying to cover this entire circle now y'all sometimes you know you'll you'll be, you'll see from the problem that you might not want the entire circle but if you want to go uh, dy dx you're going to have the upper half of the circle which is a lower half which would be negative square root of 9 minus x squared to the positive square root of 9 minus x squared lower to upper that's assuming we're talking the whole circle and then left to right would go from negative 3 to 3 that that integral would cover it now because these are this kind of symmetric equation here and you, we've seen before that when you change the limits of integration that doesn't mean you automatically switch the x out and the y we've already encountered that's not what you do but it just happens to work with this one for a circle <coughs> because x squared does equal 9 minus y squared so therefore you get these two or technically you could just restrict this in the first quadrant and then multiply it by 4 since you have four symmetric regions but either way if you set this up to integrate it would not be real pleasant unless you were using you know integration formulas but if you were doing this just you know standard integration techniques that you would have learned from Cal 2 that would have required trig substitution to integrate this without an integration formula so it would kind of would have been a kind of a mess there to come up with uh, which all right for example without even I didn't put these in maple or anything but anyway area of a circle is pi r squared radius is 3 squared 9 so there's no doubt the area of that circle is 9 pi but let's set this up in, in polar form and I actually worked it out uh, so you have to have that r there so it's r d r d theta now because that's what you, you know we talk about things being variable you know you know they have to have variables there but here's where you have to think a little differently you might be going hey that's curves that curves so wouldn't that be considered a variable no not for r it wouldn't be as long as it's curving in an exact circle think about r being the distance from the origin if you're on a circle the distance from that origin to any point on that circle would be 3 because that's the radius. So that's why that is a constant right here, not a variable. And then since we're going around the entire circle, it would be from 0 to 2 pi. So I did the arithmetic here, r dr, so the antiderivative is 1 half r squared. Put in 3 and 0, it gives me 9 halves, which I pulled outside. The antiderivative d theta would just be theta with a 9 halves. Put in 2 pi minus 0, which is just 2 pi. So these two together make 9 pi, which is correct for that area of that circle. Now here's a problem where it gives you the region 0 to 4 is the radius, so we know it's circular, and then 0 to pi over 4. Uh, at some point in time, I decided that looked sort of like a piece of pizza, so I put some pepperoni and I guess some olives on it or something, but that's that's the the pizza appearance is not part of the part of the graph but I, I guess it amused me so I did it well anyway this is already set up but so you don't have to you didn't have to draw anything but it, it wasn't written in a you know region word form but I just wanted to talk about what it looked like so there's what it would look like but pretty easy to work okay first one you know the antiderivative of r squared now notice you might be wondering where's that r well it's kind of incorporated here you know obviously when you're given an integral you work it out as is when you are converting it to polar that's when you have to put the r in there if it's already polar don't do anything so the antiderivative of r squared would be one third r cubed and zero to four 
and that's going to give me a 64 right there. So bring that out with 64 thirds. Now I have sine times cosine, u substitution. I guess for this one you could have chosen either one to be u, but I chose sine, so I don't have to worry about it. If you choose cosine, you've got that negative when you take the derivative. So I said, ah, forget that. I don't want to mess with the negative. So let u be sine of zero, then du is cosine. Perfect fit then. No adjustments to bring outside the integral. I, convert, I change the limits of integration. Pi over 4 will make it square root of 2 over 2. And sine of 0 will be 0. So you have this. So the antiderivative of u du is 1 half u squared. I put the square root of 2 over 2 in there, squared it. I get 1 half. 0 is 0. 32 thirds times 1 half. Um, gives me 16 over 3. So that would be the answer. Now here's one where they're just kind of, I don't know if I really am interested in would do this on a test per se, I don't know, but it, I could at some point in time, so it doesn't hurt to leave it. So they're kind of using uh, A as, as a radius here. And that's, that's fine. So it just means we'll have, we won't have an, I mean, so technically your outside limit is zero to A, even though your answer is going to have a variable in it. But you know, when these answers are, are normally in their numbers, but that variable really is representing a constant. So even though there's a letter in your answer, it's not a variable. So I went polar here. So you got to be careful. So this, this uh, equation, you square that, and then it, that, that means we have a circle, x squared plus y squared equals a squared. Now, how do I know that I don't, what part of the circle I want? That's very important. Now, we did that thing up here where, well, I kind of, this was, this was the whole circle because you're going from 0 to 2 pi. See, so the 0 to 3, think, think of it as not left to right, like negative 3 to 3. That's not how you read it. You're starting from the center to the edges. This was the entire circle just because that's what we're trying to represent. So you see the region. But, but what, how I know, because sometimes you, you can have uh, this, what we have right here, a quarter circle. You can have the entire circle. You could have the upper half of the circle, maybe the right half of the circle. I don't think we'll ever have the left half of the circle. I've never done a problem with that, but I guess it's mathematically possible. Okay, now the reason, uh, one, one reason I can tell here for this is even before I convert it to, to polar, is with both of those lower limits for uh, y and x being zeros, that keeps you in the first quadrant. So you're, you're trapped. So obviously, you know, if the x, if the x out here, if that, if that would have gone negative a to a, I would have come all the way over and we'd have had the left half of that top right there. Or if I'd had the negative radical, that covers lower to upper. So to cover the entire circle, we'd have had to have the negative radical down there and then the negative a. So it's just a quarter circle. So obviously you got to be careful there to get these answers right that you get the right portion of the circle. So the radius r is going from 0 to a. And because we're using the quarter circle, that's just be 0 to pi over 2. All right. And now we just work this out. It's going to be, uh, okay, we have to convert x to polar, which was at the very beginning of the notes. That x would be r cos theta. And then we have that automatic r that must go in there, right there. See how I wrote the dy dx converts to r dr d theta, that goes in there. So I kind of skipped a step here, but that's all right. Just the two r's are multiplied together to be r squared, so therefore its antiderivative would be one-third r cubed. Cosine is sitting there waiting for the next step. You put a in there, which normally will have a number instead of an a, but in this case it makes it one-third a cubed. And now we're going from zero to pi over two for cosine theta. The antiderivative of cosine of theta would be positive sine of theta. Pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 would be 1. So it just leaves it as 1 third a cubed would be the final answer. So obviously if a would have been a number here, then that we would have got a number answer. All right, how about this next one? We're going from, okay, the uh, x equals the square root of 8 minus y squared is going to give me a circle with radius square root of 8. And then y equals x is going to cut that at 45 degrees. You don't have to actually solve too much for that. But it's going to cut it at 45 degrees um, like it would any time. Now, uh, 
I solved for what the y value to show you the y is two. So we're going from to get to get the region dx dy left to right. It's going from y to the to the circle. So it's going from the line to the circle, and then lower to upper zero to two. Like I said, the two is that point of intersection right there. I mean, it's, it's given here, but I also solved for it right there to tell you they're crossing at the value y equals two. And the square root of eight is larger than two, so it would be above two and to the right of two. Okay. Anyway, let's see what happens. Now, if uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, as we saw earlier, that means the square root of x squared plus y squared is just r. All right. And so we have an r. And then dx dy or dy dx automatically converts to that magical r we have to have right there. So it's r from here. And then r or dr d theta with the automatic r. So we integrate. Um, and you get one third r cubed square root of eight, which makes it eight square root of eight, and one third, and then antiderivative d theta would be theta, so that puts a pi over four and a zero in there. Okay, this is one where you know if you were handwriting this on a test, there's lots of acceptable answers. I'm not picky, but you know if you, you could use a calculator if you're doing a multiple choice to have to get the decimal answer. That's fine. Uh, if you need the decimal answer, but I did simplify it just because I wanted to make it look like what Maple said. And Maple had uh, four thirds square root of two times pi. Now, how about this problem 30 right here? Let's see what's up with that. We have the function e to the negative x squared plus y squared over 2. That's probably a good sign. We'll need polar coordinates. And now look at the region of integration. So we got to uh, read this carefully. x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 25. So that means we're inside, for sure we're inside the circle with radius 5. Now, are we completely inside the circle? Meaning, is the shading the entire inside the circle? Well, if we had no boundaries on it there, if it just said that that on, with no other boundaries, yes, it would be the entire circle. But notice it does give us another boundary here. X is greater than or equal to zero. Doesn't say anything about Y, does it? So you never want to you know, read more in there that's really there. So just X. So that means the right half of this is going to be included. Because the Y could be positive or negative because there's no restrictions. Only X has to be positive. So it's lower and upper here. That's how, so like I said, it's very important that we, you know, piece together the correct part of the circle here. So it's a right half. So from a, a polar standpoint, angle-wise, that's going to go from negative pi over 2 to 2. Ne sorry, negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Then we're going to go from 0 to 5 for the representing the radius of the circle. And then x squared plus y squared is r squared, so that gives us e to the negative r squared over 2, r d r d theta. Now, of course, that r is very handy right there because that's going to help us when we do our u substitution. And so if you let u equal negative r squared over 2, you're going to get negative r d r as a derivative, so it just moves the negative to the outside to give you your r d r. And... And you put 5 in there. Be careful that the, with the negative on the outside, you're not squaring the 5. I mean, the negative. So it's the negative of 5 squared. So it's uh, negative 25 over 2, not positive 25 over 2. And of course, you put 0, you get 0. So you go from negative, you go from 0 to negative 25 over 2. You still have negative 2 to pi over 2. Now, I got rid of that negative, and let me... You probably would have figured this out, but I'll mention it anyway. The, you know, the reversing the limits of integration, you don't reverse both limits of integration. That would kind of count, you know, it, it, it neutralize the effect and you didn't accomplish anything. You just reverse the one you're working with. So the other ones stay the same. Don't reverse both of them. So I got rid of that negative, put zero on top, negative 25 over 2. Um, so e to zero is 1. 
minus e to the negative 25 over 2 d theta. No trouble, that's just a constant, so you don't have to worry about that. d theta, antiderivative will be theta, so we go negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which actually pi over 2 minus a minus pi over 2 means you add, so it's pi, not 0, so it's pi over 2 plus pi over 2 makes pi, and then you have this part right here. This problem that we just did right now, this looks like one that I've had on exams before, so I'd probably pay attention to that one just for good measure. Now let's see what, uh, let me scroll back up and look at the next problem before I scroll, scroll down. So the function we're integrating is 9 minus x squared minus y squared. Our region of integration is a circle, but inside the radius 3, but what part of the circle will it be? Now notice this one has both x and y being positive. So that means this time we are only in the first quadrant. So look what I have shaded down here. Ah, see what we have right there? Because this time it's, it's restricting x and y. So just, you know, don't, don't overread this. Just whatever the problem gives you, you go with that. And then 9, and when you have minus x squared and minus y squared, that will convert to minus r squared if they're both minus. So that's what happened up here. So 9 minus x squared minus y squared is 9 minus r squared. So we have uh, 9 minus r squared, and then your standard r that has to be there, dr, d theta. You could have used substitution here, but since that was to the first power in the parentheses, I want, if that had been any other power than 1, I would have used substitution. But uh, you might as well just distribute the r. But if you want to use substitution, go ahead. I just distributed the r and got 9r minus r cubed. I used the power rule and got both these antiderivatives, put in 3 and 0. And I get 81 over 2 minus 81 over 4, which is just 81 over 4. Antiderivative d theta is theta. We're going from 0 to pi over 2 because we're in the first quadrant. So basically it's 81 over 4 times pi over 2. That gives us 81 pi divided by 8. Now, okay, I guess I, you know, sometimes when I copy these problems, I always forget, especially for online classes. Uh, it might help if the instructions were actually there, which they... Uh, they would have been there uh, as in the actual problem. But anytime you know you copy problems from a subset of problems, you know the you know the instructions might have said, "Oh, for the following problems, find the volume." You know, and but also obviously it didn't put it next to each particular problem. But obviously on a test question, it would say the problem would be self-contained. It wouldn't be a subset a list of problems. Find the volume. All right, this is kind of interesting. It's inside a hemisphere, half a sphere, and outside the cylinder. Now, technically, we really don't need the three-dimension part of this because we're just using the two-dimension to set this up. Outside the cylinder, but inside the hemisphere. So what you want to do from this vantage point, and I did graph it in 3D, which you never have to do, so obviously the function we're integrating is, is going to be the hemisphere because that's the half sphere. That's going to be the height of what we're trying to find. But picture you're, you're now looking downward on this. So we're looking at this sphere as if it was on the xy plane, meaning that you can essentially, z see on the xy plane, you can zero out that z. So it's almost like we took the, the, the cylinder, the hemisphere of the cylinder, and we smashed it down to the... Um, because even though it says x squared plus y squared equals 1, that's not a circle. Technically, it's a cylinder because we're in 3 space. But obviously, when you're on the xy plane, it's a circle. But when you're in 3 space, it's a cylinder. Um, anyway, so you see all I did here was just put uh, 0 in for z, and you solve this. And, and on the xy plane, it's going to be a circle. And then it's going to see it kind of domes over right there. It kind of rounds over. But it's a circular base there. So the circle of the, 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 the radius of, the, of that circle formed by the hemisphere is 4, and then the cylinder would be 1, square root of 1. 
I'm not a big fan of using one because I want to at least make people take the, because if you didn't take the square root of the number, you'd still be right, wouldn't you? Because one is one. So, but yeah, it's because it's the square root of one. So you're actually outside, you know, this little, got this little wheel looking washer deal. You're outside the cylinder, but inside the hemisphere. So this one's actually going to be a little bit different, especially when you see what the values of R are going to be. We're not starting at zero this time. This is the first graph we've had that didn't go, the shading doesn't go all the way to the origin. Never mind. And, and there's no, oh, by the way, also the reason why I know it, it goes around the entire region is because there's nothing saying it doesn't. There's no restrictions. There's nothing saying that X or Y has to be positive. So if you don't see anything, don't assume anything. So now, okay. Uh, I just put this here. This is uh, I actually I actually solved this down here, but the actually I'm just, I think I'm gonna get rid of that. That's kind of confusing. Well, anyway, the, the volume of that hemisphere is 128 pi over three. So that obviously means my answer has got to be less than this number here, but that was not important. That's probably just confusing anyway. But it, it would have to be less than 128 pi over 3 because see that with the cylinders cutting out a chunk of that hemisphere and we're finding the volume outside of, of that cylinder but inside the hemisphere. There's a top-down look at it. That was a little harder to see. So that's what I was talking about a minute ago. See, your radius is not going from 0. It's going from 1 which is the edge of the cylinder to four. So it's going from like here to here, all the way around, one to four. It's not going back to the origin. And then once, once again, it's zero to two pi because no restrictions for, for theta. And then you have your r d r d theta, and then the square root of 16 minus y, x squared minus y squared would convert to 16 minus r squared. So one thing to remember about polar coordinates is, you know, you've got to convert everything. Sometimes on handwritten stuff in the past, I'll see people leave part of it as polar and part of it as rectangular. You cannot do that. It has to all be converted to R's and thetas. So obviously that R was very critical here. So if not, we were going to have to, you know, if that R, which it had to be there no matter what, but we would have had to use some sort of trig substitution or something. But it, now it's just basic substitution. So easy U, there's DU, so you got to adjust for it with a negative one half. Um, a U of four right here, 16 minus 16 would be zero. A U of one would be 15. So I have a negative one half, zero to two pi, and then 15 on bottom and zero on top. And, and I reversed it to get rid of that negative. So the negative's gone. Now I have 15 on top, zero on bottom. So all we have to do is integrate u to the one-half, which is an easy power rule. It's two-thirds u to the one-half, and those twos will cancel. So it's one-third u to the three-halves. So it's one-third 15 to the three-halves minus zero to the three-halves, which of course is zero. So you have one-third 15 to the three-halves. I skipped a step here, but I'll just go ahead and mention it. Uh, the antiderivative of d theta is just theta. So you're just basically throwing in a two pi minus zero, so you're tossing in a two pi. And then guess what? I just kind of came up with a couple of different versions of that, that answer. Doesn't mean we were wrong or anything, but 15 to the 3 halves would be the same thing as the, uh, the 15, square root of 15 is the same as 15 to the 3 halves. Now here, <coughs> Find the volume inside the cylinder and under the hemisphere. Now, so we're inside here, but keep in mind the height is still dictated by the rounded part of the hemisphere. So we still have 16 minus r squared, but now we're going from 0 to 1 and 0 to 2 pi. Now, I didn't work this part out. I could have, I guess, obviously, but um, <coughs> the... Um, I let Maple do it. But here's kind of an interesting result on this. Here's where I did the volume of the half sphere. 
if you had done the first part of this correctly, you would not have needed to do The interesting thing about this problem is, is technically you didn't have to really work the inside part because the, the volume you know outside the cylinder plus the volume inside the cylinder is equal to the volume of that hemisphere, the entire hemisphere. So what we found is we already found that outside part and then I'm showing you right here the volume. The volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed but half of a sphere would be one half of that. So there's that 128.3 over pi that I was telling you about a little earlier. So that entire volume of the hemisphere is 128 over 3 pi. <clears throat> but look what this integral turned out being, even though I didn't work it out. And, and it was another, it was doable, you substitution. But look at the answer up here that I simplified. You know, if you took 10 pi over 15, 10 pi times root 15, and added it to this area, those would cancel the 10 pi root 15s and you'd be left with 128 over 3 pi. So there's no doubt that answer to that other one had to be 128 pi over 3 minus 10 root 15 pi. Anyway. Now you can also then, you know, to find the area of a polar region, you're just doing all, like we did that circle earlier where it's just r d r d theta, but this one's a little bit different. Now be careful, that looks like a circle, and you wouldn't have to graph that, but if you're given r equals 2 plus sine theta, so this time, you know, you so your r is not evaluated, you know, from zero. It's, remember, r is only a constant as if it's defined as a circle. Other than that, you see, so actually r is dependent upon theta. It's a function of theta. Actually, it's 2 plus sine theta. <coughs> and so there's no restrictions. So you'd go from 0 to 2 plus sine of theta, and then you would go from 0 to 2 pi. And then we'd integrate that. So it would be 1 half r squared. You put in the 2 plus sine theta squared. And bring out the 1 half. That gives you 4 plus 4 sine theta plus sine squared theta. Which back in Cal 2, we had an identity for sine squared and co squared. <laughs> an integrating identity. In other words, you, you couldn't use, like for this one, we could not use sine squared equals 1 minus co squared because that doesn't help us from an integration standpoint. We must use it, this identity. So there, uh, there it is right here, 1 minus cos 2 theta. And I just re took these other two terms and got common denominators. You know, 4 is 8 over 2, 8 over 2, 8 over 2, so I could bring that 2 all to the outside and make it 1 fourth. You don't have to do it that way, but then I combine, there would have been an 8 right here and a 1 right there, and that makes the 9. 8 sine theta, negative cos 2 theta. And this one, you could, you know, Cal 2, I always tell people it would be good to know that. Or you could actually just, if you didn't want to do U substitution, it's like the antiderivative cos of 2 theta would be 1 half sine of 2 theta. So if it was like cos of 6 theta, it would be 1 sixth sine of 6 theta. <laughs> That's always good to kind of know. You don't have to know it, but that way you don't have to work out the integral. So 9 would be 9 theta, antiderivative 8 sine theta is negative 8 cos theta, and then minus 1 half sine 2 theta, put in 2 pi, put in 0, you get an 18 pi right here, and you get a negative 8 and a 0, a 0, negative 8 and a 0. Those negative 8s will cancel because it's negative 8 minus a minus 8. So you end up with 1 fourth times 18 pi, so it's 9 pi over 2. So the region of that little, I believe that's called a cardoid, Usually they form more of a point. This one doesn't. That's okay. Not that pointed or heart shape looking. Just kind of flattens out down there. So, and that takes care of polar coordinates. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, remember that in future problems, if you think polar coordinates apply, then you want to use them. You don't have to be told to use them. <clears throat>